Welcome along guys. Well, I'm out on the H2. She's running. We've got the full Vandermon fitted. Just look how gorgeous that is. I'll get the good camera out later on and show you that properly. But just look at the colours of that thing. It sounds absolutely unbelievable. I've got the baffle in. It's just too loud for me with the baffle in. But we'll talk about all that in a minute. Let's get going. I feel the need, the need for speed. <laughs> H2, she's all running. Listen to it. That is with the baffle in. That is that is about as loud as I like an exhaust. I, d I don't like my exhaust obscenely loud. I don't want to better hear myself think while I'm riding. So I find that volume of this just about perfect. It's funny, isn't it? How, uh, how an exhaust on a bike can just change the feel of the whole, the whole machine. When it had the standard exhaust on, it was obviously a very, very quiet bike. And it was, it was lovely, you know, it, it was like an, a... It was sort of like an express train, you know, just seamless power, just quiet. It was enjoyable, but it was just lacking that little bit of aggressiveness. With the Vandemon on there, oh... It sounds aggressive. It sounds as aggressive as it looks now. I found the quick shifter and blipper can be. It's not great. It's all right. It's certainly not the best I've ever sampled. As the miles have gone on to it, it's sort of got better. It's, it's better than it was, but it's certainly not the best. Normally, these straight four engines, you get a fantastic blipper and quick shifter. The reason I think it's perhaps not the smoothest on this is because of this has got a dog ring gearbox, like a heavy duty gearbox. So I think maybe that makes it harder to get a smoother change. I don't know. It's getting better, have a look. It's getting better, but it's nowhere near as smooth as the GSX-R. This is so different to the GSX-R. They're both sports bikes, they're both ridiculously fast, obviously. But what I find with this, it's just got such a premium feel to it. It's just so smooth. Oh, it, it's really hard to compare. I can't sort of put my finger on anything in particular. But all I can liken it to, it's like having a, say, a Porsche 911 compared to a, like a Focus RS. They're both fast cars. But the Porsche has just got that quality feel to it. What's this guy doing? He's going to lose his sidecar in a minute. It's all right, mate. Yeah, OK. Cheers, buddy. He obviously didn't want me behind him. Coming by, sir. A warp factor nine. I'm really enjoying the H2. After that shaky start with dropping it, running it in was painful. I found it very uncomfortable when I was running it in because you've got all the weight on your wrists without being able to open it up to alleviate that, that constant weight on your wrists. But now it's all run in, it's fine. It's a little bit on your wrists. I may still get those slight riser bars, which Kawasaki do. I think 20 mil higher clip-ons. I might still get those, but I think they're a couple of hundred quid. So, and it's a, quite a big job to take all the yokes apart, fit all that. But I probably will do that. The seat is a bit hard on this, but again, I'm also getting used to that a bit now. But I may get a more comfortable seat. One thing I have been doing is chatting to Dimag, 
obviously I've got a set of Dynamax on the GSX-R. Um, they don't make a fitment for this, unfortunately. So I've suggested, <laughs> being the kind-hearted soul that I am, that they can have my H2, I can't have them, they can borrow my H2 wheels for the winter to do some development work on. So I'll go up to their factory, drop the wheels off, and we'll get to a video of how the process of making carbon fibre wheels using my H2 wheels as the template and of course once they've made the first the first set it's only fair that they go on my bike <laughs> so that's the plan so I'm talking to Dimag about that I think they're going to go for it so we may get a set of carbon wheels on this as well which would be great because this is a little bit the only criticism really I can say about this bike is it's a little bit slow to change direction and the carbon wheels I think will make this absolutely it will really complement it it will just liven it up a tiny bit which is all it needs I think to be a perfect bike camera back it really f is f ferocious to about ten and a half thousand and then that's what I think the old I could feel it slowing down a little bit I think that's where the throttle bodies are closing so I guess once you fix that restriction you just keep on pulling but I mean really do you need any more than that that is bloody quick do you need any more than that yeah, it's a quick old puppy. Ooh, lost brake. Lots of brake. Ooh, love that. It is quick. It's so much different, that exhaust has just made the bike so much better to ride, so much more aggressive feeling, without being too ridiculous. It's a bit ridiculous, but not too ridiculous. One thing I do really like about this bike is the amount of torque it's got. That pickup it's got. It makes a lovely road bike, I say it every time. But it's torque which makes a good road bike and with that supercharger it's got that punch that's why I love the GSX-R as a road bike even though I was you know people call me a hypocrite because I said I'm finished with sports bikes ditch your sports bike guys get naked that was a couple of years ago and look at me I've got two sports bikes again but I just find these new well the GSX-R being the new generation of bikes with the VVT they've got the torque so they can be used on the road so I'm, I'm back into sports bikes again. This, because it's got the supercharger, it's got the torque mid-range. It makes a good road bike. <laughs> what is this guy doing? Is he drunk? Let's get in front of him. He looks like a liability. One thing with this now is, with that exhaust, I'm never going to be able to get it on track. It's, it's, even with the baffling, you hear how noisy it is? That's not going to make any sort of noise tests at any track anywhere. <laughs> Which is good because I didn't want to take this on track. These panels, this bike would be so expensive to repair if you put it down the road. I mean, these panels I think are like 500 quid each. Because you can't get them painted yourself, so I think they're like 500 quid. You know, it's just the prices of the panels and everything is just ridiculous with this. <laughs> not a track bike. There's another reason to keep the GSX-R because that is my track bike. That's the bike I want to take on track. said they didn't want to see any granny short shifting <laughs> hopefully 
I wasn't too granny like. There we go guys, I think I'm going to draw this to a close. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate the support, people watching this. I can't believe we're coming up to, edging up to 50k subscribers now. 44,000 or something now. We're starting to get towards 50k, which would be incredible. And it's all thanks to you guys watching my old rubbish I'm doing. <laughs> the channel is getting, you know, we're getting some interest from sponsors and stuff now, so it's all getting a little bit serious. But I'm absolutely loving it. I'm still going to continue to do what I do. So appreciate your efforts watching. And please leave a like, leave a comment if you can. You know, it makes a big difference to the channel and people like the videos and stuff. It really does. So really appreciate it. I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks very much. A few months back, I promised this man, Richie, a flight in that there aeroplane, and I'm a man of my word. And I like a race, so I said, let's add the bikes. Some very cool bikes. Last one there gets the round in. Their bikes are right there. Ah, you're not doing that, Bruce. You're not overtaking, sir. Ford. Ford. Right back off, that babe. That's the title. Oh, there he's done me, look at that. Absolutely infuriating. Left hand down to the turning left. Oh, left it off, you go left. Oh.